post. Taylor's in there as well, and Edwards! Rob Edwards, with just his second goal of the season, gives Exeter to the lead. Welcome to Kello's Bootlaces. Kirky, it's been a while. It's been a long time. Where have you been? Most of them at Radford. <laughs> Occasionally going to away <laughs> games, um, watching the time drop camera of the new development, and I've been to Wembley twice. Wow, we have, haven't we? Yeah. yeah, we need to go back a third time this year, don't we? And third time lucky. Yeah, readdress the balance a little bit. Yeah. You okay, though? Very good, thank you. You're looking healthy and well? Fit and healthy. I'm, I'm very impressed, actually, because they provide us with a couple of props. They've actually got a football here from when you were playing. Two props. Wow, this is a big budget show, isn't it? And a football from when I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> You're not you right. You don't remember those, that, do you? That's one of your headers there. I think it did a lot of damage. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, it's great to be back. Um, You'll be able to catch up with us on all the club's media channels. We're, we're looking to do uh, one show a month throughout the season, so it'll give us plenty to talk yeah, about. we're getting old, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, we can't, we can't, <laughs> we can't do, do it weekly anymore. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not fair on our carers, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so tonight's show, Kirky, we've got an exciting show for, uh, to, to introduce the series, really. We've got the chairman coming in, Julian Tag. Always good to catch up with the chairman. Yeah. I want to call him Taggy, but it seems yeah, a bit disrespectful, doesn't it? Yeah. So I've called him the chairman. Ask some challenging questions. We'll try and answer uh, some challenging questions. It's been a, a, a different kind of summer for the club, hasn't it? Yeah, very. So, massive so change. Be good to get his thoughts on that. We're going to catch up with the media manager for the club, Simon Larkin. So Dirty Leeds. Dirty Leeds, as we call him. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So it'd be good to get his perspective on the uh, the summer transfer activity and the start to the season. And we'll also give you a uh, a little tour around the new home changing room. I don't think a lot of people have been in there yet. I certainly haven't. Have you? No. No. So that will be interesting. Certainly, I'm hoping it's going to be a lot different to the uh, <laughs> the old changing rooms and the old grandstand, which were a little bit medieval, weren't they? Yeah, we're a little bit. Hopefully, no asbestos. Cool, so that's what's coming up on the show, and we'll start, I think, by taking you on a little tour of the home changing rooms. So here we are then, we've just walked in off the pitch up the players' tunnel in the IP office stand. This, of course, used to be earth and dirt and, and, and underneath the stand derrick for many years until the old grandstand came down. So we come up the tunnel and the first thing we see is the interview board. I'll see if I can find Kirky in a minute to interview someone there. And as we turn left, we've got the referee's room, firstly. So let's, um, I'm not quite sure where Kirky is actually. Oh, there he is. Hello mate. Kirky, Kirky's doing the added time. Look at what I found, look at this. No, I'm looking at I'm doing substitutions, look at that. Oh, so who's that? Is that Jane Stockley going off and Dean Boxy coming on? Or, 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 or me coming off and you yeah, coming, coming on. on. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well make sure you switch out. I, I will switch it off, definitely. The battery off. will be flat. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. This is the rest room, absolutely spacious compared to the other one in the other grandstand and I think we've probably got uh, a couple of showers and a toilet there. Any head and shoulders left in there? Or? Toilets clean. Okay, yeah, okay. take my shower. Yeah, good. So, uh, yeah, that's the that's the, uh, the referee's room. So we come out past just um, ladies' toilet there. If you get lady um, officials, etc. I expect that's where Lou goes. So she needs to go to the toilet. Lou break. Lou <laughs> <laughs> break. So, so this is where you can't get your coffee. That's why I come and get me half time cuppa there. Okay. Yeah. So here's the old uh, where they do the media. Obviously, Very good. Can just stand in. Okay. So, Graham, what did you think of the match? I thought we played really well. I thought they showed a lot of desire. I'm really pleased with the boys. Gave me everything. Just mm -hmm. you know, just we can improve on that. But solid start. Jaden Stockley hat trick. You must be pleased with that. Yeah, but it's a team game. I mm. thought that it's not just about Jaden. It's about the players. Great, great wide play. At the end of the day, Jaden will get the plaudits because he's the, he's the hat trick hero, and sponsors will love that. But for me, it's all about the team. Okay. And uh, any more cliches you can share with us? Well, I'm just over the moon. <laughs> Is that right? So yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, that's where the interviews are done after the gate, and then we come down this long corridor. Ooh. Uh, I think we'll go down and um, look at the away changing rooms first, shall we? Sure. Quite close. So that's Two doors, doors for the home okay, team. The one. Okay. Wow. Um, we'll have the home team. Staircase no, there. I think that goes up to where they present the trophies. Oh, 39 steps up the royal box. <laughs> right. I'll oh, look at this. Come on. And it's so nice and hot, isn't it? This is the uh, away changing room. Okay, this is probably not the biggest room in the world. And it doesn't it? look the that's good. It's psychologically, it's not yeah. the warmest, is it? It's not soft yeah. colours. It's just nice, nice and plain. Yeah. The physio bench there. Yeah. You wouldn't want to get injured and be treated in <laughs> the corner that. there, would you? Got the brush as well. And then through here, we got showers, toilets, and a couple of cubicles. And um, wet floor, caution. Wet floor there. 
So who was the last team in here? Lincoln. And Lincoln, yeah. Lincoln and Newport. So, yeah, um, so the music would have been pumping out then, wouldn't it? I guess Saturday we come in and clean it up afterwards anyway, don't we? Exactly. It's a bit of an old-fashioned table there. Yeah, yeah, it, isn't it? Yeah, as I say, well, I'd yeah. rather suspect that's because they're the away team, isn't it? Poker table. Play poker at half time. Get the cards. Right, let's go and have a look at the home changer room, shall we? The mighty Grecians. Come on, you mighty Grecians. Do you remember the changing rooms? Yeah, we've both been privileged to use them to, to play on the pitch, and yeah, it was a Not bit. Not the best, was it? Yeah, it wasn't best. like here, was it? So let's yeah, come in here. more like it, isn't it? Red and white, red and white, red and white, red and white. Really nice room here with the pegs and um, the shelving. Got a nice TV on the wall here, so I guess they can keep up to date with EastEnders or yeah, Celebrity Love Island or whatever, or whatever they watch these days. Tactics board here. Look at that. So though. Matt can get his message across. Yeah. Uh, and the old whiteboard there. That's Good, isn't uh, it? Yeah, you see those in most um, changing rooms now, don't you? And uh, if we go out through here, we've got um, similar really, we've got, the, we've got the toilets and we've got a nice shower area and we've got the addition of the old ice bath here so anyone with a tight hammy or tight hammy, groin a hammy. or James Hammond with hammy. jump in the ice bath and, and start that treatment straight away. Nice than the away one. We should have filled that and got you in there Kirky, that would oh, have been nice good. Big enough, is it? Now let's see what we've got down the other end because it's a bit different to the away Changing room. That's long, isn't it? I'm liking this. So, what is this um, in here? This, I think, is the manager's room. Oh, whenever I see a bag of balls, I always think of Melbourne in it. So, uh, <laughs> so Matt Taylor will be in here trying to um, come up yeah, with a Kinder Surprise. What's that there? See what I did there? Very good, a Kinder Surprise. Yeah, he was. Um, yeah, oh, what's that? Diamond football. Oh, company. I mean, that's an air inflator. Oh, that's what I was going to say. It's like, oh, I wonder what it was. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like that's it. technical. So, like it. So, hopefully, he portrays the tactics of this ball on the main one outside for the players as well. Yeah. Sally. Very, Very good. good. And what we got down the end? Even with Paul Gascoigne, Saturday, 6th of October. Yeah, worth promoting that, isn't it? Gaz has come into town. That'll be a fantastic evening. And here's the physio area. So, that's that's a lot nicer. We've got some fridges here and some cupboards. Any tribute? Oh, no. <laughs> that's tribute. No, it's all water. Ice water. A really yes. nice area. How's your hammy? Is it all right? Yeah, yeah. Get in there. <laughs> so that's the uh, home change room. Good little tour. Yeah, fantastic. Well, we're delighted to be joined on our first Kellos back with Julian Tag. Julian, last time we talked to you, you were chairman of the football club. Things change so fast. Are you still chairman? Well, last time I checked, yeah, I'm still in the hot seat for the <laughs> moment anyway. And it's still very hot, I guess. It is, yeah. It's been a busy summer indeed. And yeah. have, you, have you changed your Range Rover lately? No, I've not changed the Range Rover, no. <laughs> no not yet. <laughs> but did you, have a, did you manage to have a summer? Did you get away? Did you manage to chill at all? No, no and no, really. <laughs> There's so much going on. Uh, of course, I always get the privilege of going away to the, to the league meetings, which is uh, in the EFL. Uh, chairman's meetings which is in Portugal so that's nice so I usually grab a couple of days before that but unfortunately no the place has been flat out you know some people think that during the summer everybody gets a break and I'd like a pound for everybody sort of did you enjoy your break well <laughs> it's not quite like that and and, 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 not, and when you speak to chief execs and chairman in other clubs there mm. you know we, we have the standing joke everybody knows that that's the time for the most part and of course the last two years you know with the with the Wembley it takes another four weeks out of that opportunity yeah, of as well. So, uh, um, with everything that's going on, the answer to your first question is no. <laughs> well, let, let's just roll back then. We got the holiday issue out of the way. It, w it was a summer like the football club hasn't experienced for a, a dozen or so years. Yeah. Um, a lot leading up, obviously, towards that Wembley appearance, and then, then I guess a, a fairly dramatic week for all involved, wasn't it? It was, you know, you never quite know when it's coming, but uh, you know, there's lots of machinations before, so, you know, lots of people had a feeling that that might, you know, with the, with the things that had gone on before, so there was always that opportunity and that uh, it was going to change, it was always going to change at some point, so, um, you know, it has changed, uh, as you say, 12 years of continuity, um, but hopefully, uh, you know, the, the, the boardroom has managed to find a solution, and again, you know, you, everybody knows you can't buy experience, and... Uh, was the most experienced manager in all of the leagues, um, certainly at one club. Uh, but now I think we've got a, a very good replacement. Um, I think it's you know, the last few results and the recent says you know it's not all going to be plain sailing. It's not all going to be mm. uh, you know all that. So and now it'll be 
as it always was at this club, you know how everybody you know, comes together and reacts and supports each other, and particularly the manager at this point. A, a word on Tiz then, just, to, you know, we've all got to move on from Tiz at some point, but un undoubtedly he's been the club's most successful manager. I, I know you had a very close relationship with him. He, he's, it, you know, along with a number of people, he's transformed this club and done a lot of good for us. And in some ways it was great to have the MK Don so quick <laughs> and so early in the season so we could get that game out of the way and move on. Mm -hmm. Just just from a, a chairman's perspective, how will you look back on Tiz's role here or tenure here at the club? Yeah, I mean, quite often, you know, you're always all the time in this job looking forward, this needs to be done, that needs to be done, you know, there's always so much that mountain, you know, you never seem to get to the bottom of it, it's always, you know, everything's, uh, you know, a challenge, but sometimes it's actually quite good to look back, uh, you know, and see where you've come from, what you've done, and particularly if you go to the Cat and Fiddle where he had his, you know, major influences, you know, see how that's progressed, you know, in, mm -hmm. you know, both on and off the pitch, if you like, and uh, you know the place stunning to, facility, isn't it? It's, it's a great facility, and, and again, like I, like I just said, there's a, there's, a, with, there's still, you know, the change rooms were built in 1974 as a temporary measure. So you know, we're already starting to plan and trying to find a way through improving that, as, and, and that will always be like that at Exeter City. But yeah, looking back on you know what's been achieved, um, and uh, you know, and and how it was at the start and how it was at the finish, then of course there is absolutely, it's light years. Mm. There is no comparison. Sometimes it's really good to look back for any number of reasons, to mm. look back and see what it's like, because you forget so quickly. So he did a, you know, wh whatever your opinion was, and did a phenomenal job. Um, and the place is, you know, both on and off the pitch, a very, very different place now than it was then. So, you know, all you can do is quite rightly is thank him for, you know, all the effort and time and commitment that he put in. So MK Don's, an emotional afternoon for you? It was actually. I have not um, not expressed this anywhere actually, but afterwards I was massively disappointed. Of course, and you're always disappointed about losing. I don't lose very well, <laughs> but but more disappointed really just to watch and see so many of the fabric of what was here. You know, people that one you're close to, and two, you know, I, I didn't bring Steve in, but I'm pretty sure Steve wouldn't have been here if. And have plucked him out of the, you know, mm. looked after him. You've like at the beginning when he wasn't being, you know, no Blex here. He was collecting balls, and so you know, it became a became somebody that came into the club and did so much for the club. And um, Mel Gwinnett was, you know, I brought him in to take over my role in the academy because I, as I moved into the boardroom and 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 others. So you know, to see it in front of you, actually, I didn't quite, I didn't like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, but it's one of those things. So as you say, it was good to get that out of the way. You know, we, 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 we moved on before, we'll move on afterwards and uh, just disappointed we didn't win, really. Yeah, as we all are. Exactly. As we all are, but that's football, isn't it? Yeah. So, the king is dead, long live the king. Exactly. We, we've got a new leader now in Matt Taylor, someone who knows the club inside out, yeah. been here as a player and as a coach, worked yeah. under Tiz. Yeah. Uh, was he the only person that the board spoke to? He was, yeah. I mean, there was lots of other options, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, the phone of course after the Thursday evening but there've been a lot of as as you would expect you know there's a lot of work you you, you know you don't the, I use a little adage I'm using quite often now I say you know the, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago and if not it's today mm -hmm. and you know when you see these things coming you need to be thinking about what might what might come next so you need to be thinking and in all aspects of the club so that was on our minds at that point and there had been a considerable amount of thought and uh, and of course, when it when it when the bubble burst, as it were, on the Thursday, then uh, there was a lot of phone calls. But we, it's nice to have a have a plan in place and mm. and and, and uh, have a good idea of what we're going to do. It wasn't it wasn't certainly wasn't uh, certain, and there was there was options and so on. So that it could have gone in a different direction, mm. but uh, you know the plan did come. You know it came right, and the, the feel of it was right, and, and and you know for the most part, pretty much everybody I've said is they thought it was a you know. The, the, the right next step and as you right, quite rightly point out he knows the club he's been the captain here he knows how it works and you know <laughs> it's quirky if nothing you know, there isn't anything quite like it I don't yeah, believe yeah. and certainly there's no model like it um, and you know his years with the with the youth as the under 23 manager knowing he knows the kids right the way down to 15 you know well and mm -hmm. that, that's a a big starting point that we are always going to need so you know he had a major advantage on anybody who could have even thought mm -hmm. so there's and, and a, in the end, that's our, you know, that's what we're pretty much dependent on on bringing you through and, and selling them on. So, 
that's a huge factor and was a m major factor in his in his uh, in his appointment. And I guess the remit hasn't changed too much. It's still the first team. It's still the youth set up. It's still understanding the balance balance of club v trust. All those things come into that appointment. Don't they? Uh, absolutely, and and of course you know to. You, you might be able to explain it to somebody, you might be able to you know, show somebody, but unless you've lived it, which he had, I, I don't think any, it would have taken a long time for anybody to, to be educated into and understand how it all works. And some things are fantastic, some things are not quite so fantastic, but he knew all of those, uh, you mm -hmm. know, the, the nuances right from the outset. So, um, And uh, he's, a, he's an individual he, he, who very, much, very often you'll get one sentence, <laughs> Emails are one sentence too. You know, <laughs> he's the typical northerner. He's, yeah. he's he's absolutely focused. He's going to have a lot of ups and downs. There's absolutely no doubt. Nobody, you know, that you should mm. comes with the territory. You know, in any football club. But uh, if it's about uh, hard work, dedication, and eye on the eye on the prize, then we'll we'll get where we deserve. And he started really well, didn't he? Really he did. Well. Yeah, he did. He started really well. Um, and, and recruited uh, well as well. Yeah, he, you know, he's. Um, of course, he was doing the recruitment prior to that as well. So he'd been been involved in that for two years. So he knew his way around that. And you know, I think mm -hmm. always in his mind, he just, I spoke to Matt over you know, over the two years, and always in his mind, he always knew he wanted to be a manager. So, and mm -hmm. you know, Diz knew that. Everybody knew that. So it wasn't a. So in his mind, at all times, you know, he will have been thinking in those terms. Mm -hmm. And when he, as, as quite rightly, you know, Alec, I remember Alex Inglethorpe saying exactly the same. He knew exactly what he'd want to do, where he was going to go. He, he knew he was going to be a manager. Mm -hmm. And there's still there's people I come across now that know yeah, he knew. So what, why wouldn't his mindset have been, what would I do? Yeah. And of course, he does things very differently. This isn't a, this isn't the same. It's not an extension of what was going on before. It's it's his way. So mm -hmm. and that that too, I think, is refreshing. And as, a, as the season progresses, has he got certain targets to meet, or is it something that you or we all grow in together? Um, well, you, if you, you know, we've had two, you know, on the, on the back of it, two unsuccessful seasons, but two very successful seasons because it's been back-to-back -back Wembley appearances. Not a great time to take off <laughs> when you've had two Wembley uh, 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 appearances. And if you do any of the reading, and I'm constantly reading everything there is and the, you know, the, the statistics. And no, you shouldn't do that, Mr Chairman, should you? you well, should, you should. Oh, well, you, you be, <laughs> and the statistics that are there that say, mm -hmm. you know, they say, you know, when he, I think of the article I was reading about when he leaves the building and they say, you know, it's like, it takes four years to get to the point where that, well, nobody gives anybody four years and, you know, where did that happen? Where does somebody say, okay, we've got four years, good luck. But so, mm -hmm. pressure's on in every, you know, all the time. Um, and it's slightly different than it was before. Paul did have a lot more time. That was something we were able to do. And, and I, I, I think that we should give as much as we can, as much time as we can for Matt to do the same. But of course, you know, that's what the, that's what the stats and everything says. It takes that long to bring it round into the shape that you want. That'll be you know, somebody else's, who, who knows what, how, that, how that will go. Let's hope it goes well and he gets that time and, and takes the club on in that time. Finally, in this section, because hopefully we'll catch up with you later in the uh, in the programme, Taggy, about um, things around the ground. Difficult summer in many ways for yourself. Um, has Matt's appointment reignited your love for football? Are you as excited at the start of this season as you were at last? Does the does the journey and story continue for you? Well, um, it's 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 quite a hard, you know. It's relentless. It's um, I it's like. It's like being on a treadmill inside a pressure cooker. You know, I've said it before. You know, the treadmill goes, and, and every now and again the pressure cooker just, just ramps up, but it never stops. Mm. So it's actually quite tough. And when you've had two, and and I think you, you, you'll hear Paul say, you know, Tiz would have said the same, and and Matt will say the same. It's the same for the players. You know, you don't get it's relentless. So it's quite, it's quite, quite a tough ask. But you know, I, as I said in one of the interviews before, somebody said, well, you know, everybody else who used to said. I'm an Exeter boy, so I've got a choice. So, just get on with it. Well, good to be joined with the Exeter City Club media manager, Simon Larkins, a friend of the show. Guy yeah. I travel to away games with, always good company, knows his football. So, it's good to catch up with you. Let's just catch up a little bit about different kind of boss that you've got to work for now, really, with Matt Taylor. It's very different to work with than, uh, than Paul. No, similar in a, in a lot of ways in terms of, um, you know, post-match interviews, pre-match interviews. He's always very level-headed, very focused. Tiz always used to say you never get too up when you win and you never get too down when you lose and I, I certainly see that in the way Matt approaches his, 
his post-match interviews and obviously he says different things to Tiz. I, I think people have picked that up already but th that calmness um, in certainly in his post-match interviews is, is very similar to Paul. I think I guess one of the challenges for Matt this year is to put his identity on the team. Do you think that's something that he'll you know he'll really try and establish over the season? I think that's something he's already established. You can see he's made made changes um, right from the off. He's, he's brought in some very good signings as well, players that have played at a, a higher level, the majority of them anyway. Um, and I think they've come in and at the start of the season really really made a difference. So yeah, I think you can already see there's a, a real like. Matt Taylor identity to this team, so it, you know, a, a diff, maybe a different style of play to what people saw last last season. Obviously, very successful at, at home last season, but you know, it, it, we've been very successful also this season um, so far, and a, a different style of play to it as well. So, well, tell us about some of the new signings he's brought in, and obviously early early on the the first part of the season, the first couple of days, it was Nicky Law, wasn't it? it? Was the one that kind of caught the eye? Yeah, I think Nicky Law really impressed in that um, opening match. Um, Obviously, one man of the match that game set up a goal and scored himself. Um, obviously, he had the injury then up at Morecambe set him back a little bit. I have to say, recent games have been really impressed with Aaron Martin at, at the yeah. centre of that defence. I think he's he's really shown his quality, and uh, um, Jonathan Fort up front as well is, has, has looked good. He has been hampered as well by a, a, a little knock that he's picked up uh, over the last couple of games as well so yeah but in fairness all, all the new signings have, have done really well mm. and the lad Abrahams as well came on against Ipswich and it looked like a real handful didn't he yeah power and pace yeah. and, and the new lad they got from Brentford I, th I think they're looking for him to fill a similar role to what Carl Edwards did as, yeah. uh, last season so he'll be exciting to watch as well we've only had a chance to it's see him for half an hour, but um, well, we, we yeah. can't call him the new lad. We've got to call him by his name, haven't we? Which I'm going to leave that to I'll, you. Well, I'll do the Christian name, Chidozi. Oh, Benny. Very good. We'll go with that. Yeah. So, what are you? What do you think would be a successful season for for Matt this year? Um, I, I think expectation, perhaps, um, because it's Matt Taylor's first managerial role amongst the fans, is a little lower than perhaps it was last season, but. There's no reason why Matt, with his group of players and the talent he's got, that he can't have us pushing up for promotion, and he's going to be aiming for that. He's probably not going to mention the, the P word too often because he wants to keep a, a, a low key and, and build throughout the season. But um, yeah, I, I don't see any reason why that couldn't happen. And he's saying all the right things, isn't he? We talked about identity earlier, and he was saying about being a running team, and obviously, like Tizzy's mark on the team was being a passing team. So I think it's, it's been a popular appointment with the fans, isn't it? Yeah, and, and the fans have been terrific as well in in, um, in in all the games so far. I just recall back to the Fulham game when they sang for that whole that second yeah. half, and you know this mm. they've re really got behind the team and behind the players, and and I just hope that continues right throughout the season as well. It, you know, throughout it's a forty six game season, yeah. maybe over fifty if you have good runs in the cup as well. You're going to have highs and your lows. You've just got to stick with the team, stick with the new manager right the way through and I'm sure these fans will do that. I'm sure they will. Well, it's always good to catch up with you, Simon. I'm sure you've got a programme to, to write. Yeah, you're normally, always, a busy, yeah. normally a busy guy, so we'll let you get back to your uh, to your, your computer. Thanks for your time, as always. Time now for us to catch up again with club chairman Julian Tagg. So we established in the first part of the programme that you are the chairman still. <laughs> Those nice broad <laughs> shoulders that you've got. You've joined us now pitch side in front of the new development and um, we, we've only really seen it from the IP office stand side, but over here, just... Uh, just seems huge. It's yeah, it seems huge. It's um, I mean, the nice thing about it is uh, you know there's no post in the middle to get in the way. It's actually the same, pretty much the same number of seats. But uh, I think the uh, really attractive bit that unfortunately we can't get into because it's all locked up. But the attractive bit for the fans will be what's underneath, which is what they deserve. You know, some decent toilets, men's and ladies, and <laughs> yeah. there's TVs and, and outlets and so on. So I think from uh, you know it's been a long wait and everybody misses the old grandstand, but uh, it is definitely the way forward. And rumour has it that fans will be able to get a pint at half-time? Well, that is a rumour, I'm not sure about that. Okay. I think there'll be a riot if they don't, but yeah, of course <laughs> they will, yes. OK, and, and you're pleased with the progress? When, when are we looking to, to open this site? Yeah, they're aiming uh, October, I think it's like October 24th, or the uh, Forest Green game. So it mm. seems to be on target for that at the moment. Uh, David Lee, who's been uh, in charge of the project with uh, Justin, has been putting out regular 
uh, updates as what's going on with yeah. pictures and so uh, I'm pretty sure that that's what they're aiming at and so with there's no I know pitfalls between now and then that's when it's going to be and the communication like you say has been good the updates on, on the club website especially is there any special events planned at all for the opening of the yes stand? there will be um, and that'll be announced uh, we've got uh, McQueenie Mulholland Sue, uh, Sue McQueenie who's been looking at that who does that who's doing the PR is actually working on that now so there'll okay. be uh, two or three different events that allows you know all the variety of different people at different times to come and, and view the stand and I've been away for a couple of weeks and come back and, and the away end is, is taking shape as well. Now there's a little bit of an urban myth that we bought this stand for a pound off of a Barnet, is that true? Well we did, we bought it, well we, <laughs> it was never for nothing, but uh, <laughs> the way that it worked was, uh, uh, Tony as I've said many times before was very, very uh, uh, friendly and helpful towards the club when we were really in the dark times when they wanted to take 10 points off us and uh, he stood up for the club at that point so he's always been remains a good friend till now and uh, they were taking this stand down I think it's only two years old mm. and um, at, a, at a price we did do some some proper haggling <laughs> but one of the things proper. in the end because we didn't uh, you know we didn't know how we were going to pay for it it wasn't something that you know the, the fans and the, 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 the trust and the club board decided we must do it because you know the outside mm. of the ground was just an embarrassment and so was this end so uh, one of the ways to do it was that uh, because I said we didn't have it he said okay well the deal will be that uh, We'll pay for it for every pound that, uh, that, it, that somebody comes in the away end. Okay. So it could have taken us a few yeah, years, yeah. Yeah. Uh, unless we had some big games. But um, yeah. nonetheless, we, we, because of the success that we've had with uh, sales and so on, then uh, Tony's been paid for the stand, and we thank him for that. Brilliant. So, so this new seated stand that is covered by the redevelopment, enabling development that you can see bank. up behind us. Yes, and and the way ends funded be, by the club yes, and the trust. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes. 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 That was never part of the equation. That was yeah. always something we had to do, and uh, and we're going to do it. It'll be great to get back to having fans all around the pitch again, won't it? Well, it's a it's a shame really because we've had some sort of quite big games and we've been doing very well. So you know, I think pretty much every game that the IP office stand has been sold out, and you know the away fans get about 330. So we've probably missed out on a few thousand, 20, mm. 25 pounds. That you know, so we've lost a considerable amount of. We, we always knew there was never a great time no. to do it, but the best time was as soon as you could. So that's what we did, and as soon as we can get it finished, as soon as we can get more people in there, and of course the whole thing is about bringing income in. Just before we let you go, Mr Chairman, one of the privileges of my job, I think, is being able to put people on the spot. And the <laughs> Trust have released their survey for they 2018. Yes, so yes. Have you filled yours in yet? I have filled it in, yes. It's an excellent piece Bummer. of work. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, no. That's not good for it's the programme. Program. No, no. <laughs> Sorry, it's an excellent piece of work. Everybody should have a look. It, uh, it sort of addresses you know, where we are now, what we could, exactly what you expect. What can we do better? What do people think are good? What do they think could be improved? Um, some elements about what we might may or may not do in the future so it's a really good piece of work and it'll only be a good piece of work if we get plenty of people filling out in fact everybody and more we need you know a big number to give us a good indication of, of what we're doing right and wrong mm. so it's a genuine opportunity for those that come in Absolutely. here week in week out to have their say about what goes on here um, you can do it as you say there's a paper paper version that was given out for the first time I think at the game and I'm sure it's on uh, haven't looked but I'm sure it's on the trust website you can access it there and fill it out online and is there any time scales that you're aware of? When not we're that I to know of. There probably is a time it. scale, but I'm not aware okay. of that at the moment. You have got me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate your time tonight. You've been open and honest as ever, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you later in the season. Pleasure. Thanks for doing the show. So, Kirky, that's the end of our comeback show. A bit rusty. How, <laughs> how many debuts have we had? <laughs> oh, what a season. I, I don't know. We're up to about 500 uh, shows, aren't we, or something? I, yeah, I can't yeah. keep up with it. I thought the chairman was good, though. He's great, isn't he? I think the thing with, with Taggy is that, you know, you can, if you lost Steve Perriman, you know, you lost Tiz, etc. But I think Taggy's the one, really, isn't he? If Taggy goes, I just Holds think it all together, yeah, it does hold it all together. As he said in his interview with you, he's an exit of bait. He is. So, he is. Uh, and he's done his survey already, so hats off to you, Mr. Tag. Simon Larkin's always good value. It's brilliant, isn't he? always good value. Yeah. Always good to have a little proper dirty lead, isn't it? Knows so. his stuff. No, he's, and he's a good travelling companion, yeah. too, so I do like spending time with the boy Larkin. And unlike the region's Premier, Premier Journals, Journals, he knows how to use spell check, doesn't he? So <laughs> fair play to Absolutely. Simon. Absolutely. And uh, impressed with a new changing facility. Fantastic, well. isn't it? It's great. It's fantastic. It? Interesting what, what Taggy was saying about the other changing rooms and all the memories there. And now we've got all, the, all these new memories as yeah. well. So, of course, started with the, the Lincoln game last year. So, bring it on. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the show. We've got plenty of exciting features to come up as the season progresses and hopefully as the, season, uh, the team progresses as well. So, see you next time on Kellos. Rob Edwards with just.
just his second goal of the season. Gives Exeter the lead.